God of Carnage. The Novaks and the Raleighs sitting down facing one another. We need to sense right away that the place belongs to the Novaks and that the two couples have just met. In the center, a coffee table covered with art books, two big bunches of tulips in vases. The prevailing mood is serious, friendly, and tolerant. So this is our statement. You'll be doing your own, of course. At 5.30 on the 3rd of November in Cobble Hill Park, following a verbal altercation, Benjamin Raleigh, 11, armed with a stick, struck our son, Henry Novak, in the face. This action resulted in, apart from a swelling of the upper lip, the breaking of two incisors, including injury to the nerve in the right incisor. Armed. Armed? You don't like armed? Uh, what should we say, uh, Michael? Furnished, equipped, furnished with a stick? Uh, is that all right? Furnished, yes. Furnished with a stick. Furnished. <laughs> The irony is we've always regarded Cobble Hill Park as a haven of security, unlike Whitman Park. No, oh, she's right. We've always said Cobble Hill Park, yes. William Park, no. Absolutely. Sorry, Whitman. Anyway, thank you for coming. Um, there's nothing to be gained from getting stuck down in some emotional cul-de-sac. We should be thanking you. We should. I don't see that any thanks are necessary. Uh, fortunately, there is still such a thing as the art of coexistence, isn't there? Which the children don't appear to have mastered. At least not ours. Yes, not ours. What's going to happen to the uh, tooth with the affected nerve? We don't know yet. They're being cautious about the prognosis. Apparently the nerve hasn't been totally exposed. Only a little bit of it has been exposed. Yes, uh, some of it's been exposed and some of it's still covered. That's why they've decided not to kill the nerve just yet. They're just trying to give the tooth a chance. Obviously it would be best to avoid endontic uh, surgery. Well, yes. So there'll be an interim period where, while they give the nerve a chance to recover. In the meantime, they'll be giving him ceramic crowns. Whatever happens, you can't have an implant before you're 18. No, no, no. Permanent implants can't be fitted until you finish growing. Of course, I hope, I hope it all works out. Yes, I hope so. Those tulips are gorgeous. <laughs> oh, they're from that little Korean deli up on Smith Street. You know, the one at the end? Oh, yes. They come every morning direct from Holland. $40 for a bunch of 50. Oh, really? You know the one at the end? Yes, yes. You know, he didn't want to identify Benjamin. No, he didn't. Impressive sight, that child. Face bashed in, teeth missing, still refusing to talk. I can imagine. He also didn't want to identify him for fear of looking like a tattletale in front of his friends. Uh, we have to be honest, Veronica. It, it was nothing more than uh, bravado. Of course, but bravado is a kind of courage, isn't it? That's right. Uh, so how, what I mean is how did you manage to get Benjamin's name? <laughs> Well, we explained to Henry he wasn't helping this child by shielding him. We said to him, if this child thinks he can keep on hitting people with impunity, why should he stop? We said to him, if we were this kid's parents, we would definitely want to be told. Absolutely. Yes. His cell phone vibrates. Excuse me. He moves away from the group as he talks. He pulls a newspaper out of his pocket. Yes, Murray, thanks for calling back. Right in today's Times, let me read it to you. According to a paper published in the Lancet and taken up yesterday in the Financial Times, two Australian researchers have revealed the neurological side effects of Antril, a hypertensive beta blocker, manufactured at the Varennes Pharma Laboratories. These side effects range from hearing loss to ataxia. So who the hell is your media watchdog? Yes, it's very goddamn inconvenient. No, what's most inconvenient about it, as far as I'm concerned, is the annual shareholders meeting in two weeks. Do you have an inter insurance contingency to cover litigation? Okay. Oh, and Murray, Murray, ask your PR gal to find out if this story shows up anywhere else. Call me back. Excuse me. So oh, you're a lawyer. What about you? Oh, uh, me. Uh, I have a wholesale company, the household goods, and and Veronica's a writer and and works part time in an art and history bookshop. A writer. I contributed to a collection on the civilization of Sheba based on the excavations that were restarted at the end of the Ethiopian Etrurian 
war. And I have a book coming out in January on the Darfur tragedy. So you specialize in Africa. I'm very interested in that part of the world. Do you have any other children? Henry has a nine-year-old sister, Camille, who's furious at her father because last night her father got rid of the hamster. You got rid of the hamster? Yes. The hamster makes this most god-awful racket all night, then spends the whole day fast asleep. Henry was in a lot of pain last night. He was being driven crazy by the noise that the hamster was making. And i tell you the truth, I've been wanting to get rid of it for a long time. So I said to myself, okay, that's it. I took it and I put it in the street. I thought they loved drains and gutters and all that, but I guess not. It's just sat there like paralyzed on the sidewalk. Well, they're not domestic animals. They're not wild animals. I, I really don't know what their natural habitat is. Dump them in the woods. They'll probably, they're probably just as unhappy. So I don't know what you're supposed to where to put them? You left it outside? He left it there and tried to convince Camille it had run away, but she wasn't having it. Was the hamster gone this morning? Gone? Yeah. And you, uh, what field are you in? I'm in wealth management. Is it at all possible, uh, forgive me for pitting the question so bluntly, <laughs> that Benjamin might apologize to Henry? It'd be good if they talked. He has to apologize, Alan. He has to tell him he's sorry. Yes, yes, of course. But is he sorry? He realizes what he's done. He just doesn't understand the implications. He's 11. If you're 11, you're not a baby anymore. No, you're not an adult either. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't offered you anything. Uh, coffee, tea. Uh, is there any of that clefouty left, Ronnie? Oh, it is extraordinary, Clefaudi. I wouldn't mind an espresso. Just some water. Uh, espresso for to me too, sweetie. And uh, bring the Clefaudi anyway. <sighs> what I always say is, we're a lump of potter's clay, and it's up to us to fashion something out of it. Perhaps it won't take shape till the very end. Ah, who knows? Mm. Oh, you have to taste this Clefaudi. Good Clefaudi. It's an endangered species. You're right. What is it you sell? Domestic hardware, uh, locks, doorknobs, uh, soldering irons, all sorts of household goods, uh, saucepans, frying pans. Money in that, is there? Well, yeah, you know, it's never exactly been a bonanza. It was pretty hard when we started, but I'm out there every day pushing my product. Yeah, we survive. At least it's not seasonal, Ugh. like textiles. Ugh. Although we do have a lot of fondue pots around Christmas time. I'm sure. When you saw the hamster sitting there paralyzed, why didn't you bring it back home? Because I couldn't pick it up. You put it on the sidewalk. I took it out in its cage and I sort of, you know, tipped it out. I don't like to touch rodents. Veronica comes back with a tray, drinks, and the clefouti. I don't know who put the clefouti in the fridge. Monica puts everything in the fridge. She won't be told. What's Benjamin said to you? Sugar? No, thanks. What's in the clefouti? Uh, apples and pears. Apples and pears? My own little recipe. He cuts it's going to be too cold. It's a shame. And distributes the slices. Apples and pears. This is a first. Apples and pears. It's pretty textbook, but there's a little trick to it. There is? Pears need to be cut thicker than apples because pears cook faster than apples. Ah, of course. Oh, wait. She's not telling you the real secret. <laughs> Let them try it. Very good. It's very good. Tasty. Gingerbread crumbs. <laughs> Brilliant. To be quite honest, I got it from his mother. Gingerbread, delicious. Well, at least all this has given us a new recipe. I'd prefer it if it hadn't cost my son two teeth. Of course, that's what I meant. Strange way of expressing it. Not at all. I... Cell phone vibrates. I have to take this. Yes, Murray. No, no, don't ask for right of reply. You'll only feed the controversy. Are you insured? Mm -mm. 
what are these symptoms? What is ataxia? What about on a standard dose? How long have you known about this? And all that time you never recalled. What's the gross? Yeah, got it. I see. He hangs up and immediately dials another number. Alan, do you mind joining us? Yes, yes, I'm coming. Serge, they've known about the risk for two years. An internal report, but it didn't formally identify any undesirable side effects. No, they took no precautions. They didn't ensure, not a word about it in the annual report. Impaired motor skills, stability problems. In short, you look completely retarded. <laughs> They are grossing $150 million. Blanket denial. Idiot wanted to demand a right of reply. We certainly don't want a right of reply. On the other hand, if the story spreads, we could put out a press release, say it's disinformation leaked two weeks before the shareholders meeting. He's going to call me back. Okay. I haven't had lunch. No, no, please help, you, help yourself. Thanks, I have no manners. What were we saying? Uh, that it would have been nicer to meet under different circumstances. Ah, yes, right. So the clafuti, it's your mother's? Oh, uh, the recipe's my mother's, but uh, Ronnie made this one. <laughs> your mother doesn't mix pears and apples. No. Poor thing has to have an operation. Really? What for? Your knee. Oh, they're going to insert a uh, rotatable prosthesis made out of uh, metal and uh, polyethylene. Uh, she's wondering what's going to be left of it when she's cremated. Don't be horrible. Ugh. She refuses to be buried next to my father. She wants to be cremated and put next to her mother, who's all the way on her own in Florida. Two worms looking out at the sea, trying to get a world in edgewise. <laughs> <clears throat> We're very touched by your generosity. We appreciate the fact that you're trying to calm the situation down rather than exacerbate it. Frankly, it's the least we can do. Yeah. No, not at all. How many parents standing up for their children become infantile themselves? If Henry had broken into Benjamin's teeth, I'm afraid Alan and I would have been a lot more thin-skinned about it. I'm not certain we'd have been so broad-minded. No, oh, of course you would. She's right. Not at all certain. Oh, yeah, but because we all know it could have easily been the other way around. So what does Benjamin have to say about it? How does he view the situation? He's not saying much. I think he's still slightly in shock. He understands that he's disfigured his playmate? No. No, he does not understand that he's disfigured his playmate. Why are you saying that? Benjamin understands very well. He understands he's behaved like a thug. He does not understand that he's disfigured his playmate. <laughs> You don't care for the word, but the, the word is um, unfortunately accurate. My son has not disfigured your son. Your son has disfigured my son. Come back at five and have a look at his mouth and teeth. Temporarily disfigured. The swelling on his lip will go down, and as for his teeth, take him to the best dentist. I'm prepared to chip in. And that's what the insurance is for. What we'd like is for the boys to make up so that this sort of thing never happens again. Let's arrange a meeting. Yes. That is the answer. Should we be there? They don't need to be coached. Just let them do it man to man. Man to man? Alan, don't be ridiculous. Having said that, we don't necessarily have to be there. It'd probably be you know, better if we weren't, wouldn't it? The question isn't whether we should be there or not. The question is, do they want to talk to one another? Do they want to have a discussion? Henry wants to. What about Benjamin? It's no use asking his opinion but it has to come from him. Benjamin has behaved like a hooligan. We're not interested in what mood he's in. Well, if Benjamin is forced to meet Henry in a punitive context, I can't see the result to be very positive. Madam, our son is a savage. To hope for any kind of spontaneous repentance would be fanciful. Right, I'm sorry, I have to get back to the office. You stay, Annette, you'll tell me what you've decided. I'm no use whichever way you cut it. Women always think you need a man, you need a father, as if they'd be any help at all. Men are dead weight, they're clumsy and maladjusted. Oh, you can see the F train, that's great. I'm so embarrassed, but I, I can't see, say, I can't stay either. <laughs> My husband has never exactly been a stroller dad. What a pity. It's lovely taking the baby for a walk. 
and it lasts such a short time. You always enjoy taking care of the children, didn't you, Michael? You loved pushing the stroller. Yeah, yeah, I did. So what have we decided? Could you come by the house with Henry about 7.30? 7.30? Uh, what do you think, Michael? Well, honestly. Go on. I think Benjamin ought to come here. Yes, I agree. I don't think it's right for the victim to go traipsing around. That's right. Personally, I can't be anywhere at 7.30. Since you're no use, we won't be needing you. All the same, it would be better if his father were here. Alan's going to get <laughs> All right, but then it can't be this evening. Yeah, there's no mention of this in the executive report. No risk has been formally established. There's no evidence. Tomorrow? I'm flying to The Hague tomorrow. You're working in The Hague? I have a case of the International Criminal Court. The main thing is that the children speak to one another. I'll bring Benjamin here at 7.30 and we can leave them to have their discussion. No? You don't look very convinced. If Benjamin is not made aware of his responsibilities, they'll just look at each other like a pair of China dogs. It'll be a catastrophe. What do you mean? What do you mean made aware of his responsibilities? I'm sure your son is not a savage. Of course Benjamin isn't a savage. Yes, he is. Alan, this is absurd. Why would you say something like that? He's a savage. Uh, how does he explain his behavior? He doesn't want to discuss it. But he ought to discuss it. He ought to do any number of things. He ought to come here. He ought to discuss it. He ought to be sorry for it. Clearly, you have parenting skills that put us to shame. We hope to improve, but in the meantime, please bear with us. All right, uh, this is idiotic. Let's not end up like this. I'm only thinking of him. I'm, I'm only thinking of Benjamin. I got the message. Let's just sit down for another couple of minutes. A little more coffee? A coffee, okay. Then I'll have one too, thanks. Uh, that's all right, Ronnie, I'll do it. Annette delicately shuffles some of the numerous art books dispersed around the coffee table. I see you're a great art lover. <laughs> art, photographs, to some extent it's my job. I adore bacon. Ah, yes, bacon. Cruelty. Majesty. Chaos. Balance. That's right. Is Benjamin interested in art? Eh, not as much as he should be. What about your children? Oh, we try. We try to fill the gaps in the education system. Yes. <laughs> we try to make them read, to take them to concerts and exhibits. We're eccentric enough to believe in soothing powers of culture. And you're right. Michael comes back with the coffee. So... Clefaudi, is it a cake or a tart? I mean, serious question. I was just in the uh, kitchen. Linzer tort, for example. Is that a tart? Come on, come on, come on. You can't leave that one little slice. Clefaudi is a cake. The pastry's not rolled out. It's mixed in with the fruit. You really are a cook. I love it. The thing about cooking is you have to love it. In my opinion, it's, the o it, it's only the classic tart that's... Uh, to say on a pastry base, it deserves to be called a tart. And what about you? Do you have any other children? A son from my first marriage. I was wondering, not, not that it's all important, uh, what started the fight? Henry won't say one single word about it. Henry refused to let Benjamin join his gang. Henry has a gang? He also called Benjamin a snitch. Did you know Henry has a gang? No. That's terrific. Why is it terrific? Because I had my own gang. Me too. Uh, <laughs> and what does that entail? Uh, there are five or six kids. They follow you and are ready to sacrifice themselves. Uh, like, like in Spartacus. Absolutely, like in Spartacus. Mm. Who knows about Spartacus these days? They use a different model, <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> anyway, clearly you know more than we do. Uh, Benjamin hasn't been as silent as you implied. And do we know why Henry called him a snitch? Uh, no, sorry, S stupid, it, that, that's a stupid question. Um, first of all, I couldn't care less. Also, it's besides the point. We can't get involved in children's quarrels. And it's none of our business. No. On the other hand, what is our business is what unfortunately happened, the, the violence, that's our business. 
to become the head of my gang when I was 12, I had to fight Bobby Capecchi, who was bigger than me, one-on-one, -on -one, single combat. What are you talking about, Michael? What's that got to do with it? No, I, I, you're right. It, it, it's got nothing to do with it. We're not discussing single combat. The children weren't fighting. I know, I, and I, I just suddenly had a flashback. There's not that big a difference. Oh, yes, there is. Excuse me, there's a, a very big difference. There's a very big difference. What? With Bobby Capecchi, we agreed to have a fight. Did you beat the shit out of him? Up to a point. All right, can we forget Bobby Capecchi? Would you allow me to speak to Benjamin? By all means. I wouldn't want to do it without your permission. Speak to him. What, what could be more natural? Good luck. Stop it, Alan. I don't understand you. Mrs. Novak. Veronica, we don't have to be so formal. Veronica, you're motivated by an educational impulse, which is very sympathetic. If you don't want me to speak to him, I won't speak to him. No, speak to him. Read him the riot act. Do what you like. I don't understand why you don't seem to care about this. Ma'am. Veronica. Of course I care, Veronica, enormously. My son has injured another child. On purpose. See, that's the kind of remark that gets my back up. Obviously, on purpose. But that makes all the difference. The difference between what and what. That's what we're talking about. Our son picked up a stick and hit your son. That's why we're here, isn't it? This is pointless. Yes, yeah, she's right. This kind of argument is pointless. Why do you feel the need to slide in on purpose? What kind of message is that supposed to be sending me? Listen, we're on a slippery slope. My husband is desperate about all kinds of other things. I'll come back this evening with Benjamin and we'll let things sort themselves out naturally. I am not in the least bit desperate. Well, I am. There's nothing to be desperate about. Yes, there is. Alan's phone vibrates. Don't make any statement. No comment. No, of course you can't take it off the market. If you take it off the market, you become responsible. The minute you take Antrill off the market, you're admitting liability. There's nothing in the annual accounts. If you want to be sued for falsifying the executive report and get shit canned in two weeks, take it off the market. Last year on Parents' Day, well, wasn't it Benjamin who was in that play? Charlie's aunt. Charlie's aunt. We'll think about the victims later, Murray. Let's see what the shares do after the annual meeting. He was extraordinary. Yes. We are not going to take the medicine off the market just because two or three people are bumping into the furniture. Don't make any statements for the time being. Yes, I'll call you back. Cuts him off and finds his colleague. I remember him very clearly in Charlie's End. Do you remember him, Michael? Yeah, yeah. He was hilarious when he was in, in, in a drag. Yes. They're panicking. They've got the media up their ass. You have to prepare a press release, not something defensive, not at all. On the contrary, go out all guns blazing. You insist that Berens Pharma is the victim of a destabilization attempt two weeks before its annual shareholders meeting. Where does this paper come from? Why did it have to fall out of the sky right now, etc., and so on? Don't say anything about health problems. Just ask one question. Who's behind this report? Right. They're terrible. These pharmaceutical companies. Profit, profit, profit. You're not supposed to be listening to my conversation. You're not obliged to have it in front of me. Yes, I am. I'm absolutely obliged to have it here. Not my choice, believe me. They dump any old crap on you without giving it a second thought. In the therapeutic field, every advantage brings with it risk as well as benefit. Yeah, I understand that. All the same, you know, funny job you have. Meaning? Michael, this has nothing to do with us. Funny job. And what is it you do? I have an ordinary job. What is an ordinary job? I told you. I sell frying pans. And doorknobs. And toilet fittings. Lots of other things. Ah, toilet fittings. Now we're talking. That's really interesting. Alan. It's really interesting. I'm interested in toilet fittings. No, oh, why shouldn't you be? How many types are there? No, oh, two different systems, gravity or pressure assist. I see. Yeah, depending on the feed. Well, yes. Yeah, either the water comes down from above or up from below. Yes. Oh, I could introduce you to one of my stock managers who specializes in this kind of thing, if you like. You'd have to leg it out to Secaucus, though. You seem to be very on top of the subject. Are you intending to punish Benjamin in any way? 
You can carry on with the plumbing in some more appropriate setting. I'm not. What's the matter? Yes, you're very pale, sweetheart. Oh, a little pale, certainly. I feel nauseous. Uh, nauseous? I have some pepto -Bismol. No, 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 it'll be all right. What could we, oh, Coke, Coke's very good. He immediately sets off in search of it. I'll be all right. Walk, walk around a little, uh, take a few steps. He takes a few steps. Veronica comes back with the Coca-Cola. Really, you think so? Yes, yes, small sips. Thank you. Give me Surge, will you please? Uh, right. Ask him to call me back. Ask him to call me back right away. Is it good, Coca-Cola? I thought it was just supposed to be for diarrhea. Not only for that. All right? All right. Veronica, if we want to reprimand our child, we'll do it in our own way and without having to account to anybody. Absolutely. What do you mean, absolutely, Michael? They can do whatever you want with their son. It's, it's their prerogative. I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so, Ronnie? I don't think it's their prerogative. Really? Explain. His phone vibrates. I'm sorry? Excellent. But don't forget, nothing's been proved. There's nothing definite. Get this straight. If anyone fucks up, Murray is a dead man in two weeks and us with him. That's enough, Alan. That is enough with the cell phone. Will you pay attention to what is going on here? Shit. Yes, uh, call me back and read it to me. What's the matter with you? Have you gone nuts shouting like that? Surge heard everything. Good. Drives me crazy, that cell phone. Endlessly. Listen, Annette, I'm already doing you a big favor by being here in the first place. Extraordinary thing to say. I'm going to throw up. No, you're not. We're not going to throw up. Yes, I am. Would you like to use the bathroom? No one's forcing you to stay. No, no one's forcing him to stay. I'm feeling dizzy. Stare at a fixed point. Stare at a fixed point, woof woof. Go away, leave me alone. She would be better off in the bathroom. Go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom if you want to throw up. You give her some Pepto-Bismol. You know, suppose it could be the Clafuti. It was made yesterday. Don't touch me. Come down, woof woof. Uh, please, let's not get worked up about nothing. According to my husband, everything to do with how school or garden is my department. No, it's not. Oh, yes it is. And I understand why. It's deathly. All of it. It's deathly. If you think it's so deathly, then why have children in the first place? Maybe Benjamin senses your lack of interest. What lack of interest? You just said... Let vomits violently. A brutal and catastrophic <laughs> spray, part of which goes over Alan. The art books on the coffee table are likewise deluged. Go get the dishpan. Go get, go get the dishpan. Veronica runs out to look for a pan, and Michael hands her the coffee tray, just in case. Annette retches again, but nothing comes out. <laughs> you should have gone to the bathroom, Woof Woof. This is ridiculous. Oh, it looks like your suit ate most of it. Very soon, Veronica is back with a basin and a cloth. The basin is given to Annette. Well, it's absolutely not the Clifaudi. Couldn't possibly be. It's not the Clifaudi. It's nerves. This is pure nerves. Would you like to clean up in the restroom? Oh, no. The Kakoshka. Oh, my God. <laughs> bile into the basin. Give her some Pepto-Bismol. Not now. She can't keep anything down. Where's the restroom? I'll show you. It's Wrong. nerves. Oh, it's nerves. It's a panic attack. You're a mama, Ned. Whether you want to be or not, I understand why you feel desperate. Mm -hmm. What I always say is, you can't control the things that control you. Mm -hmm. With me, it is the cervical vertebrae. Oh, the vertebrae seizes up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, up a little more bile. Veronica returns with another basin containing a sponge. Uh, what are we going to do about the Kokoshka? Well, I would I'd spray it with Mr. Clean. The, the problem is how to dry it. Or else you could, you know, you, so you sponge it down and put a, a bit of perfume on it. Perfume? Use my Coros. I never wear it. It'll warp. Hey, we, could run, we could run the hairdryer over it and flatten it out under a pile of books. Or iron it, like they do with money. Oh, my God. I'll buy you another one. You can't find it. It went out of print years ago. 
I'm so sorry. Well, self, let me do it, Ronnie. She hands him the basin of water and the sponge, disgusted. Michael gets started on cleaning up the book. It's a reprint of the catalog from the 53 London exhibition, more than 20 years old. Go get the hairdryer and the koros in the linen closet. Her husband's in the restroom. Well, he's not naked, is he? He goes That's... up as he continues to clean up. That's the worst of it. The people of the tundra need a bit more of a what? I'll be back. He goes out with the used basin. Veronica and Michael return more or less simultaneously. She has the bottle of perfume. He has the basin containing fresh water. Michael finishes cleaning up. Feeling better? Yes. Can we spray now? Where's the hairdryer? He's bringing it when he's finished with it. We'll wait for him. We'll put the coros on last thing. Can I use the bathroom as well? Yes, 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 of course. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Veronica <laughs> takes her out and returns immediately. What a nightmare. Horrible. What? You better not push me any further. She's dreadful as well. Nah, not as bad. She's a phony. It's less irritating. You're both dreadful. Why do you keep siding with them? I don't keep siding with them. What, what are you talking about? You keep vacillating, trying to play both ends against the middle. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Going on about your triumphs as a gang leader, telling them they're free to do whatever they like with their son when the child is a public menace. When a child's a public menace, it's everyone's concern. I can't believe she puked all over my books. She sprays the Kokoshka. Put some of that on the uh, people of the tundra. If you think you're about to hurl, you go to the proper place. And the Fawida. Spraying everything. This is disgusting. I was pushing a little bit with the shithouse systems. You were brilliant. Good answers, don't you think? Brilliant. The stock manager thing was brilliant. Oh, what an asshole. And what did he call her? Woof woof. <laughs> That's right, woof woof. <laughs> woof woof. Alan returns <laughs> hair dryer in hand. That's right, I call her woof woof. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be rude. It's so easy to make fun of other people's nicknames. <laughs> what about us? What do we call each other, Michael? Far worse, isn't it? What about the hairdryer? Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's the hairdryer. We call each other Darjeeling, like the tea. That's more ridic ridiculous, if you ask me. Michael switches on the machine and starts drying the books. Veronica flattens out the damp pages. Uh, smooth them out. Smooth them out. As she smooths out the pages, raises her voice above the noise. How's the poor thing feeling? Better? Better. I reacted very badly. I'm ashamed of myself. Not at all. I just steamrollered her about my catalog. I can't believe I did that. It turn the page. It stretch it out. You got to stretch it out all the way. You're going to tear it. You're right. He's right, Michael. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Michael, it's dry. Objects can become ridiculously important. Half the time you can't even remember why. Michael shuts the catalog and they both cover it with a little cairn of heavy books. Michael finishes drying the, Fuji the Fujita, the people of the tundra, etc. Now there we are. Good as new. Where does, uh, where does Wolf Wolf come from? How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> I know, I, I know that one. Mm-hmm, woof, woof, yeah. <laughs> our, ours comes from our honeymoon in India. It's, it's idiotic, really. Shouldn't I go and see how she is? No, off you go, Darjeeling. Shall I? Annette returns. Ah, Annette, I was worried about you. Are you feeling better? I think so. If you're not sure, stay away from the coffee table. I left a towel in the bathtub. I wasn't sure where to put it. Perfect. Oh, you've cleaned it all up. I'm so sorry. Oh, everything's great. Everything is in order. Annette, forgive me. I, I hardly paid any attention to you. I, I've been obsessed with my Kokoschka. Don't worry about it. The way I reacted, very bad of me. Not at all. Something occurred to me in the bathroom. Yes? Perhaps we skated too hastily over. I mean, well, what I mean is... No, say, say it, Inez. Just say it. 
An insult is also a kind of assault. Of course it is. Well, that depends, Michael. Mm. Yeah, it depends. Benjamin's never shown any signs of violence. He wouldn't have done that without a reason. He got called a snitch. His phone vibrates. I'm sorry. Yes. As long as there aren't any statements from victims. We don't want any victims. I don't want you being quoted alongside victims. A blanket denial, and if necessary, attack the newspaper. They'll fax you the draft of the press release, Murray. If anyone calls me a snitch, I'm liable to get annoyed. Unless it's true. What did you say? I mean, suppose it's justified. My son is a snitch? Of course not. I, I was joking. Yours is as well, if that's how it's going to be. What do you mean ours is as well? Well, he did identify Benjamin. Because we insisted. Michael, this is completely besides the point. Well, what's the difference? Whether you insisted or not, he gave you the name. Annette. Annette what? You think my son is a snitch? I, I don't think anything. Well, if you don't think anything, don't say anything. Stop making these insinuations. Let's stay calm, Annette. Michael and I are making an effort to be reasonable and moderate. Not that moderate. Oh, really? What do you mean? Moderate on the surface. I really have to go, woof woof. All right, go on, be a coward. Annette, right now I'm risking my most important client to this responsible parent routine. My son has lost two teeth, two incisors. Yes, yes, I think we all got that. One of them for good. We'll have new ones! We'll give him new ones! Better ones! It's not as if he burst an eardrum. We're making a mistake not to take into account the origin of the problem. There's no origin. There's just an 11-year-old child hitting someone. With a stick. Armed with a stick. We withdrew the word. We withdrew it because we objected to it. We withdrew it without any protest. They were deliberately designed to rule out error or clumsiness, to rule out childhood. I'm not sure I'm able to take much more of this tone of voice. You and I have had trouble seeing eye to eye right from the start. There's nothing more infuriating than to be attacked for something you, you yourself consider a mistake. The word armed was inappropriate, so we changed it. Although, if you stick to the strict definition of the word, its use is far from inaccurate. Benjamin was insulted and he reacted. If I'm attacked, I defend myself. Especially if I find myself alone, confronted oh. by a gang. <laughs> Puking seems to have perked you up. Do you have any idea how crude that sounds? We all mean well. All four of us, I'm sure. Why let these minor irritants, these, these pointless aggravations, push us over the edge? Oh, Michael, that's enough. Let's stop beating around the bush. If all we are is moderate on the surface, let's forget it. No, no. I refuse to allow myself to slide down that slope. That slope. The shitty slope those two little bastards have perched us on. There, I've said it. I'm not sure Ronnie has quite the same outlook. Veronica. Sorry. So now Henry's a little bastard, is he? That is the last straw. Right, well, I really do have to go. Me too. Go on, go, I give up. Telephone ring. Hello? Oh, 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 mom, no, 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 we're just uh, with some friends. But uh, tell me about it. Uh, do whatever the doctor wants you to do. They've given you antro? Wait, wait, wait a minute, mom. Wait, wait a minute, D don't go away. Antro's your crap, isn't it? My mother is taking it. Thousands of people take it. You stop taking that stuff right now. Do you hear what I'm saying, mom? Immediately. Don't, don't argue. I'll, exp <clears throat> I'll explain li later. Tell Dr. Perello I'm forbidding you to take it. Why go in the dark? That is completely ridiculous. All right, all right, all right. We'll talk about it later. Lots of love, Mom. I'll, I'll call you back. <laughs> uh, she rented glow in the dark crutches so she doesn't get knocked down by a truck. <laughs> as if something, as if someone in her condition would be strolling down the BQE in the middle of the night. They've given her antral for her blood pressure. If he takes it and stays normal, I'll have her called as a witness. Didn't I have a scarf up there? I don't appreciate your cynicism. 
If my mother displays the most minor symptom, I'm starting a class action. Ah, it'll happen anyway. Well, I would hope so. Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Novak. Behaving well gets you nowhere. Courtesy is a waste of time. It weakens you and undermines you. Right, come on, Annette, let's go. Enough preaching and sermons for today. Go on, go. But can I just say one thing? Having met you two, it is pretty clear from what he's, what's, what's his name, Benjamin? There are mitigating circumstances. When you murdered that hamster. Murdered? Yes. I murdered the hamster. Yes. You've done your best to make us feel guilty, but your virtue went straight out the window once you decided to be a killer. I absolutely did not murder that hamster. Worse, you left it shivering with terror in a hostile environment. That poor hamster is bound to have been eaten by a dog or a rat. It's true. That is true. What do you mean that is true? It's true. What do you expect me to say? It's appalling what must have happened to that creature. I thought the hamster would be happy to be liberated. I thought it was going to run off down the gutter, jump in for joy. Well, it didn't. And you abandoned it. I can't touch those things. For fuck's sakes, Ronnie, you know very well I am incapable of touching that whole species. He has a phobia about rodents. That's right. I am frightened of rodents. I'm terrified of snakes. Anything close to the ground, I don't want them near me. So that is the end of it. And you, why didn't you go out and look for it? Because I had no idea what had happened. Michael didn't tell us, me and the children, and the hamster, that the hamster had escaped till the following morning. I went out immediately, immediately. I walked around the block. I even went down to the basement. I find it intolerable to be on trial all of a sudden for the hamster saga that you've seen fit to reveal. It is a personal matter which is nobody else's business but ours and has nothing to do with this present situation. And I find it incomprehensible, incompre uh, incomprehensible to be called the killer in my own house. What's your home got to do with it? My home, the doors of which I have opened, the door of which I have opened wide in a spirit of reconciliation to people who ought to be grateful to me for it. It's wonderful the way you keep patting yourself on the back. Don't you feel any guilt? I feel no guilt whatsoever. I have always found that creature repulsive. I'm ecstatic that is gone. Michael, that's ridiculous. What's ridiculous? Have you gone crazy as well? Their son beats up Henry and I get shit on because of a hamster? You behave very badly with that hamster. You can't deny it. Fuck the hamster! You won't be able to say that to your daughter this evening. No, oh, bring her on. I'm not gonna let myself be told how to behave by some nine-year-old snot nose. 100% behind you there. Pathetic. Careful. I've been extremely restrained up to now, but I am two inches away from crossing that line. And what about Henry? What about Henry? Isn't he upset? If you remember, Henry has other problems. Henry was less attached to Nibbles. Ah, stupid name as well. If you feel no guilt, why do you expect our son to feel any? Let me tell you something. I'm up to here with these idiotic discussions. We tried to be nice. We brought tulips. My wife passed me off as a liberal, but I can't keep this bullshit up anymore. I am not a member of polite society. What I am and always have been is a fucking Neanderthal. Aren't we all? No, no, I'm sorry. We are not all fucking Neanderthals. Well, not you, obviously. No, no. not me, thank God. Not you, Darcy, not you. You are a fully evolved woman. You are stain resistant. Why are you attacking me? I'm not attacking you, quite the opposite. Yes, you're attacking me, you know you are. You organized this little shindig. I just let myself be recruited. You let yourself be recruited? Yes. That's detestable. Not at all, you stand up for civilization, that's completely to your credit. Exactly. I am standing up for civilization. And it's lucky there are people who are prepared to do that. You think it's a better idea to be a fucking Neanderthal? Come on now, come on. Is it normal to criticize someone for not being a fucking Neanderthal? No one's saying that. No one's criticizing you. Yes, they are! 
No, they're not. What are we supposed to do? Sue you? Not speak to one another and try to slaughter each other with insurance claims? Hey, stop it, Ronnie. Stop what? You're blowing things out of proportion. I don't give a shit. You force yourself to rise above petty-mindedness and you finish up humiliated and completely on your own. Helen's phone has vibrated. Yes. Let them prove it. Prove it! But if you ask me, don't answer at all. We're always on our own. Everywhere. Who wants a little rum? Murray, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you back from the office. So you see, I'm living with someone who is totally negative. Who's negative? I am. Oh, this was the worst idea. We should have never arranged this meeting. I told you. You told me? Yeah. You told me you didn't want to have this meeting. I didn't think it was a good idea. It was a good idea. Oh, please. Raises the bottle of rum. Anybody? You told me it wasn't a good idea, Michael? Think so. You think so? Wouldn't mind a little drop. Didn't you have to go? I could manage a small glass now that we've come this far. Michael pours for Alan. You look me in the eye and tell me we weren't in complete agreement about this. Calm down, Veronica, calm down. This is pointless. Who stopped anyone touching the clafooty this morning? Who said, let's keep the rest of the clafooty for the Raleigh's? Who said it? That was nice. What's that got to do with me? What do you mean, what's that got to do with it? If you invite people, you invite people. You're a liar. You're a liar. He's a liar. You know, speaking personally, my wife had to drag me here. When you're brought up with a kind of John Wayne-ish idea of virility, you don't want to settle this kind of problem with a lot of yakking. I saw your model was Spartacus. <laughs> Family. Analogous. Analogous. Are there no lengths you won't go to to humiliate yourself, Michael? Obviously, it was pointless dragging him here. What were you hoping for, Woof Woof? It's true, it's a ludicrous nickname. Were you hoping for a glimpse of universal harmony? This rum is terrific. It is, isn't it? English Harbor, 10 years old, direct from Antigua. It's Antigua. And the tulips? Whose idea was that? I said, it's a shame the tulips are finished. I didn't say rush down to the Korean deli at the crack of dawn. Don't work yourself up into this state, Veronica. It's crazy. The tulips were his idea, entirely his idea. Aren't we allowed a drink? Yes, Veronica, and I would like one too. By the way, it's pretty amusing someone descended from Spartacus and John Wayne who can't even pick up a mouse. Will you shut up about that hamster? Shut up! He gives Annette a glass of rum. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's lavable. What about her? I don't think she needs any. Give me a drink, Michael. No. Michael? No! Veronica tries to snatch the bottle out of his hand. Michael resists. What's the matter with you, Michael? All right. There. There you are. Take it. Drink. Drink. Who cares? Is alcohol bad for you? It's wonderful. Right. Well, I don't know. Listen, Mr. Raleigh. Alan. Alan. Alan, we're not exactly soulmates, you and me. But you see, I live with a man who decided once and for all that life is second rate. It's very difficult living with a man who comforts himself with that thought, who doesn't want anything to change, who can't work up any enthusiasm about anything. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit about any of that. You have to believe, you have to believe in the possibility of improvement, don't you? He's the last person you should be telling all this. I'll talk to whoever I goddamn will, please. <sighs> Who the fuck is this now? Yet, yeah. Ma, he's fine. I say he's fine. He lost his teeth, but he's fine. Yes, he's in pain. He's in pain, but it'll pass. Mom, Mom I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm going to call you back later. I'll call you back. He's still in pain? No. Then why worry your mother? He can't help himself. He always has to worry her. 
All right, that's that's enough, Veronica. What what is with this psychodrama? Veronica, are we ever interested in anything but ourselves? Of course, we'd all like to believe in the possibility of improvement, of which we could be the architect and which would be in no way self-serving. Does such a thing exist? In life, some people drag their feet, it's their strategy. Others refuse to acknowledge the passing of time and drive themselves demented. What difference does it make? People struggle until they're dead. Education, the miseries of the world. You're writing a book about dark four, fine. I can understand you saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to choose a massacre. What else does history consist of? And I'm going to write about it. You do what you can to save yourself. I'm not writing the book to save myself. You haven't read it. You don't know what it's about. It makes no difference. Terrible stink of Koros. Terrible. You certainly laid it on. I'm sorry. Not your fault. I was the one spraying like a lunatic. Anyway, why can't we take things more lightly? Why does everything always have to be so exhausting? You think too much. Women think too much. There is an original remark. I bet that's thrown you for a loop. Think too much. I don't know what that means. And I don't see the point of existence without some kind of moral conception of the world. See what I have to live with? Shut up. Will you shut up? I detest this pathetic complicity. Oh, you disgust me. Oh, come on. Have a sense of humor. I don't have a sense of humor, and I have no intention of acquiring one. What I always say is, marriage, the most terrible ordeal God can inflict on you. Great. Marriage and children. There's no need for you to share your views with us, Michael. As a matter of fact, I find it slightly indecent. That's not going to worry him. Oh, you mean you don't agree? These observations are beside the point. Alan, say something. He's entitled to his opinions. Yes, but he doesn't have to broadcast them. Well, yes, perhaps. We don't give a damn about their marriage. We're here to settle a problem to do with our children. We don't give a damn about their marriage. Yes, but... But what? What do you mean? There's a connection. There's a connection. Of course, there's a connection. There's a connection between Henry having his teeth broken and our marriage? Obviously. We don't get it. Children consume our lives and then destroy them. Children drag us towards disaster. It's unavoidable. When you see those laughing couples casting off into the sea of matrimony, you say to yourself, they have no idea. Poor things, they just have no idea they're happy. No one tells tells you anything when you start out. I have an old school buddy who's just about to have a child with his new girlfriend. I said to him, a child at our age, are you insane? The 10 or 12 good years we have left before cancer or stroke, and you're going to screw yourself up with some brat? You don't really believe what you're saying. He does. Oh, of course I believe it. Worse even. Yes. You're demeaning yourself, Michael. Oh, is that right? (laughs) Stop crying, Veronica. You can see it only encourages him. Alan refills his empty glass. Help yourself. Help yourself. Exceptional, isn't it? Exceptional. Could I offer you a cigar? No. No cigars. Too bad. You're not intending to smoke a cigar, Alan. I'll do what I like, Annette. If I feel like accepting a cigar, I'll accept a cigar. If I'm not smoking, it's because I don't want to upset Veronica, who's already completely lost it. She's right, stop sniveling. When a woman cries, a man is immediately provoked to the worst excesses. Added to which, Michael's point of view is, I'm sorry to say, entirely sound. This phone vibrates. Yes, Serge. Go ahead. Put New York, the date, and the exact time. This is obscene. He moves aside, muffles his voice to escape her fury. Whatever time you send it, it has to look piping hot, fresh out of the oven. No, not we're surprised, we condemn. Surprised is feeble. This goes on from morning to night, from morning to night. It's glued to that cell. That cell phone makes mincemeat of our lives. Uh, Just a minute. Annette, this is very important. It's always very important. Anything happening somewhere else is always more important. Go ahead. Yes, not procedure, maneuver. 
a maneuver time for two weeks before the annual accounts, etc. In the street, at dinner, he doesn't care where. A paper in quotes. Put the word paper in quotes. I give up. Total surrender. I want to throw up again. Oh, where's the dish pan? I don't know. You just have to quote me. This is simply a disgraceful attempt to manipulate share prices. There it is. Please help yourself. Ronnie. Everything's all right. We're fully equipped. Share prices and to undermine my client, confirms Alan Rally, head counsel for the Brins Pharma Company, AP, Routers, General Press, Medical Press, the whole nine yards. She wants to throw up again. What's the matter with you? I'm touched by your concern. It's upsetting me. I am sorry. I must have misunderstood. Oh, Annette, please, let's not us start now. Just because they're fighting, just because their marriage is fucked doesn't mean we have to compete. What right do you have to say our marriage is fucked? Who gave you permission? Alan's phone vibrates. They just read it to me. We're sending it to you, Murray. Manipulation. Manipulate share prices. It's on its way. Wasn't me who said it. It was Frank. Michael. Michael, sorry. I forbid you to stand in any kind of judgment over our relationship. Then don't stand in judgment over my son. That's got nothing to do with it. Your son injured ours. They're young. They're kids. Kids have always given each other a good beating during recess. It's a law of life. No. No, it isn't. Of course it is. You have to go through a kind of apprenticeship before violence gives way to what's right. Originally, let me remind you, Mike was right. Possibly in prehistoric times, not in our society. Our society? Explain society. Oh, you're exhausting me. These conversations are exhausting. You see, Veronica, I believe in the god of carnage. He has ruled uninterruptedly since the dawn of time. You're interested in Africa, aren't you? Net wretches. Oh. Feeling bad? Don't worry about me. I am worried. Everything's fine. As a matter of fact, I just came back from the Congo. Over there, little boys are taught to kill when they're eight years old. During their childhood, they may kill hundreds of people with a machete, with a kalish, with a thump gun. So you'll understand that when my son picks up a bamboo rod, hits his playmate and breaks a tooth, or even two in Cobble Hill Park, I'm likely to be less susceptible than you are to horror and indignation. You're wrong. A thump gun. Yes, that's what they call a grenade launcher. And that spits in the basin. Are you all right? Perfectly. What is the matter with you? What's the matter with her? It's just bile. It's nothing. Don't lecture me about Africa. I know all about Africa's martyrdom. I've been steeped in it for months. I don't doubt it. Anyway, the ICC has already conducted an inquiry on Darfur. You think I don't know about that? Oh, don't get her started on, oh, for God's sake. Veronica throws herself at her husband and hits him several times with an uncontrolled and irrational desperation. Alan pulls her off him. You know what? I'm starting to like you. Well, I don't like you! She is a supporter of peace and stability in the world. Shut up! We're living in America. We're not living in Kinshasa. We're living in America according to the principles of Western society. What goes on in Cobble Hill Park reflects the values of Western society, of which, if it's all the same to you, I am happy to be a member. Beating up on your husband is one of these principles, is it? Michael, this is going to end badly. She threw herself on you in such a frenzy. If I were you, I'd be flattered. I'll do it again in a minute. He's making fun of you. You do realize that. I don't give a shit. I'm not making fun. On the contrary, morality decrees we should control our impulses, but sometimes it's good not to control them. You don't want to be singing Ave Maria when you're fucking. Where can you find this rum? Uh, that village. Uh, now you can. Sump gun. <laughs> Pump gun. God, you're right. That's right, thump gun. Why don't you just say grenade launcher? Because thump gun is correct. It's like you say Kalish instead of Kalishnikov. Who's this you? That's enough, Annette, that's enough. The great warriors, like my husband, you have to give them some leeway. They have trouble working up an interest in lo local events. True. I don't see why. I don't see why. We're citizens of the world. I don't see why we should give up the struggle just because it's in our own backyard. 
Oh, Ronnie, do stop shoving these thoughts for the day down our throat. I'm going to kill him. On the cell phone is vibrating. <laughs> yes, all right. Take out regrettable, crude, a crude attempt to. That's it. You're right. This is excruciating. Otherwise, he approves the rest? Fine, fine, very good. What were we saying, thump gun? I was saying, whether my husband likes it or not, that no one place is more important than another when it comes to exercising vigilance. Vigilance? Well, Annette, it's ridiculous to drink the state you're in. Uh, what state? On the contrary. Vigilance, it's an interesting idea. Yes, no, no interviews before the circulation of the press release. That's it. I insist you break off this horrendous conversation. Absolutely not. The shareholders won't give a fuck. Remind him the shareholder is king. Annette launches herself at Alan, snatches the cell phone, and after a brief look around to see where she can put it, shoves it into the vase of tulips. Annette, what the? So insane. <laughs> well done. Oh my God. Are you completely insane? Fuck! He rushes toward the vase, but Michael, who has gotten in ahead of him, fishes out the dripping object. The hair dryer. Where's the hair dryer? He finds it and turns it on at once, directing it towards the cell phone. You need to be locked up, you poor thing! This is incomprehensible! I had everything in there! It's brand new! It took me hours to set up! Really, I, I don't understand you. That was completely irresponsible. Everything's in there! My whole life! His whole life! Hang on, we might be able to fix it. Forget it, it's fucked! We'll take out the battery and the SIM card. C can you open it? I don't know how, I just got it. No, no, give it to me. It's fucked! They think it's funny, they think it's funny! <laughs> there we are. You, she goes Veronica. back on the offensive with the hair dryer, having laid out the various parts. You, Veronica, you at least could have the manners not to laugh at this. <laughs> My husband will have spent his entire afternoon blow drying. <laughs> Annette makes no bones about helping herself to more rum. Michael, immune to finding any of this amusing, keeps busy, concentrating intently. For a moment, there's only the sound of the hair dryer. Alan has slumped. Leave it, pal. Leave it. There's nothing you can do. Michael finally switches off the hairdryer. We'll have to wait a minute. You want to use our phone? I have to say... Yes. What is it you have to say, Michael? No. I really can't think of what to say. Well, if you ask me, everyone's feeling fine. If you ask me, everyone's feeling better. Everyone's much calmer, don't you think? You know, men are so wedded to their gadgets. It belittles them. It takes away all their authority. A man needs to keep his hands free, if you ask me. Even an attache case is enough to put me off. There is a man once I found really attractive. Then I saw him with a square shoulder bag, a man's shoulder bag. But that was it. There's nothing worse than a shoulder bag. Although, there's also nothing worse than a cell phone. A man ought to give the impression that he's alone, if you ask me. I mean that he's capable of being alone. I also have a John Wayne-ish idea of virility. And uh, what was it he had? A Colt 45? A device for creating a vacuum? A man who can't give the impression that he's a loner, has no texture. So, Michael, are you happy? It is somewhat fractured, our little, what was it you said? I've forgotten the word, but in the end, everyone's feeling more or less all right, if you ask me. I should probably warn you, rum drives you crazy. I've never felt more normal. Right. I'm starting to feel rather pleasantly serene. <laughs> That's wonderful. Rather pleasantly serene. As for you, Darjeeling, I don't see what's to be gained by getting publicly smashed. Kiss my ass. Michael goes to fetch the cigar bottle. 
Cigars Thanks, are not Alan. smoked in this house. These are Cuban, Cohiba, Monte Crisco, number three and number four. You don't smoke in a house with an asthmatic child. Who's asthmatic? Our son. Didn't stop you from buying a fucking hamster. It's true. If somebody has asthma, keeping animals isn't recommended. Completely unrecommended. Even a, a goldfish could be risky. Do I have to listen to this fatuous nonsense? He snatches the cigar box out of Michael's hand and slams it shut brutally. I'm sorry. No doubt I'm the only one of us not feeling rather pleasantly serene. In fact, I've never been so unhappy. I think this is the unhappiest day of my life. Drinking always makes you unhappy. Michael, every word that comes out of your mouth is destroying me. I don't drink. I drink a mouthful <laughs> of this shitty rum you're waving about as if you were showing the congregation the Shroud of Turin. I don't drink and I bitterly regret it. It'd be a relief to be able to take refuge in a little drop every minor setback. My husband's unhappy as well. Look at him, slumped. He looks as if someone's left him by the side of the road. I think it's the unhappiest day of his life, too. Yes. That's so very woof woof. Michael starts up the hair dryer again, directing it at the various parts of the cell phone. Will you turn off the blow dryer? That thing is toast. The telephone rings. Yes. Because it could kill you. That medication is poison. Some, someone is going to explain it to you. He Tell her. To Alan. Tell her what? Everything you know about that crap you're peddling. How are you, ma'am? What can he tell her? He doesn't know the first thing about it. Yes. And does it hurt? Of course. Well, the operation will fix that. Then the other leg, I see. And no, no, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon. She keeps calling me doctor. Doctor? This is grotesque. Hang up. But you, I mean to say, you're not having any problems with your balance. Uh, no, not at all, not at all. I don't listen to any of that. All the same, it'd probably be a good idea to stop taking it for the time being until, until you've had a chance to get comfortably through your operation. Yes, you sound as if you're in very good shape. Michael snatches the receiver from him. All right. Mom, is that clear? Stop taking the medication. Why do you always have to argue? Stop taking it. Do what you hold. I'll call you back. Lots of love. Love from, love from us all. All right. Mwah. Ugh. She is killing me. One pain in the balls <coughs> after another. Right then. What if we decided, shall I come back this evening with Benjamin? No one seems to give a rat's ass anymore. All the same, I should point out, that's what we're here for. Oh, I'm starting to feel nauseous. Where's the pan? Michael takes the bottle of rum out of Annette's reach. That's enough. In my mind, there are wrongs on both sides. That's it, wrongs on both sides. Are you serious? What? Are you aware of what you're saying? I am, yes. Our son Henry, to whom I was obliged to give two extra strength Tylenol last night, is in the wrong. He's not necessarily innocent. Fuck off. I've had quite enough of you. He grabs Annette's handbag and hurls it toward the door. Fuck off. My purse! Alan! What's going on? They lost their shit. Alan, help! Alan, help! She gather Shut up! She, she's broken my compact and my spray bottle. Defend me. Why are you defending me? We're going. It's he prepares to gather up the parts of his cell phone. It's not as if I'm strangling her. What have I done to you? There are not wrongs on both sides. Don't mix up the victims and the executioners. Executioners? Oh, you are so full of shit, Veronica. All this simplistic baloney, we're up to here with it. I stand by everything I said. Yes, yes. You stand by what you've said. You stand by what you've said. Your infatuation with a bunch of Sudanese is bleeding into everything now. I'm appalled. 
Why are you choosing to show yourself in this horrible light? Because I feel like it. I feel like showing myself in a horrible light. One day, you may understand the extreme gravity of what's going on in that part of the world, and you'll be ashamed of this inertia and your repulsive nihilism. You're just wonderful, Darjeeling. You're the best of us all. I am. Yes. Let's get out of here, Alan. These people are monsters. She drains her glass and goes to pick up the bottle. Alan prevents her. Stop it, Annette. No, I want to drink some more. I want to get bombed out of my mind. This bitch hurls my purse across the room and no one bats an eye. I want to get drunk. You already are. Why are you letting them call my son an executioner? You come to their house to settle things and you get insulted and bullied and lectured on how to be a good citizen of the planet. Our son did well to clout yours and I wipe my ass with your bill of rights. Mouthful of run, man. Bam! The real face appears. I told you. Didn't I tell you? What did you tell him? That she was a phony. This woman is a phony. I'm sorry. <laughs> when did you tell him? When you were in the bathroom. You'd known her for 15 minutes, but you could tell she was a phony? It's the kind of thing I pick up on right away. It's true. I have an instinct for that kind of thing. And phony, what does that mean? I don't want to hear anymore. Why are you putting me through this, Alan? Calm down, woof woof. She's someone who tries to smooth the rough edges, period. She doesn't care any more than you do. She's all front. It's true. It's true. It's true. Are you saying it's true? They don't give a fuck. They haven't given a fuck since the start. It's obvious. Her too. You're right. And you do, I suppose. Let me say something, honey. Explain to me in what way you care, Michael. What does the word mean in the first place? You're far more authentic when you're showing yourself in a horrible light. To tell you the truth, no one in this room cares, except for Veronica, whose integrity, it has to be said, must be acknowledged. Don't acknowledge me. Don't acknowledge me. I care. I absolutely care. We only care about our own feelings and that we're not social crusaders. I saw your friend Jane Fonda on TV the other day. I was inches away from joining the KKK. What do you mean, my friend? What's Jane Fonda got to do with all this? You're the same breed. You're part of the same category of woman. Committed problem solving. That's not what we like about women. What we like about women is sensuality, wildness, hormones. Women who make a song and dance about their intuition. Women who are custodians of the world depress us. Even him, poor Michael, your husband, he's depressed. Don't speak for me. Who gives a flying fuck what you like about women? Where does this lecture come from? A man like you who could begin to give a fuck for your opinion. She's yelling. She's yelling like a stuck pig. What about her? Doesn't she yell when she said that little bastard had done well to clout our son? Yes, he did do well. At least he's not a sniveling little faggot. Yours is a snitch. Is that any better? Alan, let's go. What, what are we doing? Staying in the stump. She makes to leave, then returns towards the tulips, which she lashes out at violently. Flowers fly, disintegrate, and scatter all over the place. There, there, that's what I think of your pathetic flowers, your hideous tulips. <laughs> this is the worst day of my life as well. In the pause, Michael picks something up off the floor. This yours? Annette takes a spectacle case, opens it, and takes out a pair of glasses. Thanks. Not broken? No. What I always say is... Alan starts gathering up the stems and petals. Leave it. No. The telephone rings. After some hesitation, Veronica picks up the receiver. Well started. Oh, good. Are you able to do your homework at Annabelle's? No. No, darling. Mm, yes, I went all the way to the grocery store. But, you know, my love, Nibbles is very resourceful. I think you have to have faith in her. You think she was happy in a cage? 
Daddy's very sad. He didn't mean to upset you. Yes, you will, of course. You'll speak to him again. Listen, darling, we're worried enough already about your brother. She'll eat. She'll eat leaves, acorns, horse chestnuts. She'll find things. She knows what food she needs. Um, worms, snails, stuff that drops out of trash cans. She's like us. She's omnivorous. See you soon, sweetheart. Chances are that creature's probably stuffing its face as we speak. No. What do we know? End of play. <laughs>